Chronic tobacco smoking significantly increases total cholesterol and LDL levels on your blood test. Lack of exercise, also known as sedentary lifestyles, significantly raises LDL triglycerides and total cholesterol on your blood test. Binge drinking, drinking too much booze significantly raises total cholesterol on your blood test. In some cases, it even doubles the total cholesterol number. Psychological stress significantly increases total cholesterol, trigs, and LDL on your blood test. So if you're an insurance company and you assume most people eat a fairly standard American diet and look around, it's a fair assumption, you're going to check people's blood sugar because diabetes and high blood sugar quickly destroy your overall health and you're going to check people's total cholesterol. And that calculation is HDL plus LDL plus 20% of your triglycerides. And this calculation, in my opinion, is massively outdated, by the way. We've been using 20% of triglycerides since the 1950s, so nobody wants to change it because so many thousands of research studies have been done using this equation, but it's silly. In my opinion, triglycerides are the most important of the three things, HDL, LDL, and triglycerides. And the equation should be something like HDL, LDL, and five times your triglycerides, not 20% of your triglycerides. That would measure people's health far more accurately. But anyways, I realize this is a tangent, but if you're gonna go back in history to about 1909, and researchers were feeding large amounts of meat, eggs, and milk to rabbits, which are never supposed to eat meat, eggs, or milk, and they were finding adult rabbits developed atherosclerosis, plaque in the arteries. Silly, right? Feeding high cholesterol foods or animal products to a strict vegan animal like a rabbit. And of course, you're going to damage their body. You're going to damage their arteries. Yet researchers all around the world to this day are still using this absurd rabbit animal model to study plaque relating to cholesterol. I literally worked with the principal investigator of this lab in 2009 at Boston University Medical School where they fed rabbits a high cholesterol diet and they used the American Heart Association guidelines to study plaques. And they still, to this day, they're looking at rabbit atherosclerosis by feeding them, quote, toxic cholesterol. It's toxic to them because they're they're a vegan animal. I have other videos on the topic of cholesterol though, so I don't wanna get too far sidetracked here. But the point is insurance companies use total cholesterol as a metric because it usually is an accurate reflection of whether people are smoking cigarettes, binge drinking, they're never exercising, and they're under too much psychological stress. These things are legitimate and accurate measures of overall health. Here's the problem with using cholesterol as a blood test. If you are a lean, mean, exercising machine, you never smoke, you never binge drink alcohol, but you do happen to eat a lot of high quality red meat. And I'm not talking about uh, summer sausage filled with Kraft Foods finest preservatives that sits at room temperature and has an expiration date two years from now. I'm talking about fresh meats, fresh animal products of all types that are similar to the way your ancestors ate for thousands of years. If you eat like that, your cholesterol levels do go up because saturated fat does raise your total cholesterol. We've known this since the 1950s on uh, experiments feeding people with saturated fats, which is usually just another way of saying we fed people animal fats. But again, if you're extremely healthy and you eat lots of meats, lots of saturated fats, similar to hunter-gathering tribes that still exist today, your cholesterol will be high and life insurance companies will raise your premiums. Remember, the hunter-gathering tribes with high saturated fat diets, they have about a 1% dementia rate at age 80, even though they supposedly don't live past the age of 37, if you buy into the current propaganda. But they're at 1% at age 80, while people in high-income countries have about 10% dementia rates in people 65 and older. So a far higher rate of dementia at a far younger age. In addition, hunter-gathering tribe members over the age of 40 have far less artery plaque measured by a CAC score. It's only about 3% that are higher than 100 on a scale of 1,000, which is five times better than Americans. And even the Maasai tribe in Africa, the tribe that eats mostly meat and drinks blood, they have low rates of heart disease. Well, in America, heart disease is the leading cause of death at about 23.4%. So you can see why insurance companies are trying to determine who has healthier arteries. But let's get to it. I want to give you two strategies for lowering your total cholesterol on a blood test. 
if you smoke, you binge drink, you barely sleep, you never exercise, I think it would be unethical to hack your blood test for life insurance purposes. But if you're a healthy meat eater who exercises, I think it's a reasonable strategy to avoid paying inflated prices on health insurance. And at the end of the day, I'm not here to tell you what to do or not do. I just want to lay out the strategies for lowering your total cholesterol based on two actual studies by Dave Feldman. And just so you know, I had Feldman on this very YouTube channel long before he was famous in 2017. So I'm glad he's publishing in peer-reviewed journals today. Uh, we can more easily access the details of his cholesterol lowering strategies. So first of all, cocaine relapses lower cholesterol. Oh, wait, I didn't mean to show that study. Where was I? Oh, Oreo cookie treatments lower LDL cholesterol more than high intensity statin therapy. Assuming you're lean in body mass. So what Nick Norwitz from Harvard and Dave Feldman did in this study was to eat more than a dozen Oreo cookies per day for 16 days and track their total cholesterol. They got a 71% reduction in LDLC here, which is hilarious because they also tested statins for a much longer than 16 days and they got only a 32% decrease with statins. And here's the actual table. The total cholesterol went from about 500 down to near 400 in one week and in 16 days down to 232. Meanwhile, with statins, it started around 500, but even after six long weeks, the number was still north of 450. And I've seen this trend in other people also. A high carb diet drops total cholesterol very quickly. It's just a risk because carbs are addictive. They act on the cocaine center of our brains and two weeks eating a dozen Oreo cookies per day is not healthy in my opinion. But this is definitely one strategy. Strategy number two for temporarily lowering your total cholesterol, it's outlined here, and Dave Feldman and I spoke about this in 2017. People will complain about this study because it's only one person, and that's a fair complaint, but this does usually work. Medical doctors are so stuck on the idea that cholesterol is bad for you, they won't authorize a professional study where people do what's called overfeeding with high fat diets. They are usually trained to think fats are bad, and carbs are amazing. And so it's an uphill battle with doctors trained under the shadow of these medical associations to get them to do good studies here. But anyway, so what they did here was they started with a healthy low carb 2,200 calorie diet and a total cholesterol of about 300. And the calorie number was almost doubled to about 4,100 for five days. The saturated fat intake was also increased from 85 grams per day to 174 grams per day. This dropped the total cholesterol from about 302 to 289 or 285. So only about a 5% drop, which is not as dramatic as the Oreo cookies, but this it was repeated consistently in 24 other people. So those are the two studies. And in full disclosure, there's also the strategy of going vegan for a few weeks because there are studies that show you drop your cholesterol almost 30% in four weeks of going vegan. But this is essentially just the Oreo cookie experiment. People are going from a diet rich in animal fats to a diet low in saturated fat and very high in carbs because most plants that people eat are more carb heavy than fat heavy like rice and oats and bread and pasta and chips and fruits and beans and root vegetables. A lot of carbs. So anyway, I hope this gives you some interesting ideas. And I also hope it leads to a fun discussion in the comments section.